Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Yusuf. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting remotely. The cabinet praised His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for reaffirming the kingdom's full support for Jordan to protect its sovereignty under the leadership of His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn Al Hussein and highlighted the strength of the Bahraini Jordanian relations. The cabinet highlighted the kingdom's set goals for curbing the spread of COVID 19 during the upcoming period, which centers around reducing mortality and hospital admission rates increasing vaccination rates and encouraging all citizens and residents to follow preventive measures. The cabinet then commanded the Ministry of Interiors and the Ministry of Health's efforts towards the health and safety of inmates and workers in correction and rehabilitation centers in accordance with established health measures and celebrated the efforts of Bahrain's frontline health workers on the occasion of World Health Day. His Royal Highness then issued directives to doubling social security assistance as well as disability pensions and ordered the Ministry of Labor and Social Development to start dispersing payments during the holy month of Ramadan. On the occasion of the International Day of Conscience, which was adopted by the United Nations in response to an initiative by His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, the cabinet praised the contributions of the late His Royal Highness to the kingdom's development. The cabinet then expressed its solidarity with Egypt in developing water security policies and expressed the kingdom's support for the efforts in preserving water rights as stipulated in international laws during the filling and operating process of the Renaissance Dam. The cabinet then approved the following memorandums. A memorandum presented by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft decision on public health centers, licensing requirements, administration, conditions and obligations. A memorandum presented by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs concerning the press, printing and publishing. A memorandum presented by the Minister of Education on expanding language elective courses at government schools to gradually include the United Nations languages. A memorandum presented by the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism on the dual power and water plants governing regulations. A memorandum presented by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's responses to six proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet then reviewed the following topics. A memorandum presented by the Minister of Interior on the achievements of the operations and governance sector at the Information and E-Government Authority for the year 2020. A memorandum presented by the Minister of Finance and National Economy on the Kingdom's fourth quarterly economic report of 2020, paying particular attention to non-oil GDP growth of 3.3% as economic activity picked up with the support of a financial support package and the national vaccination campaign. A memorandum presented by the Minister of Housing on the Ministry's priorities, objectives and programs for the years 2019 to 2022. The Deputy of Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa confirmed the Long Service Medal First Class on the Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Naimi, Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Al Naimi, and Defense Ministry Under Secretary Major General Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa and a number of senior BDF officers. He conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the honorees and congratulated them on the honor. He praised their dedication, tireless efforts, and long service to the BDF. He stressed that under His Majesty's directives, the BDF is proceeding with determination towards further achievements in accordance with the sound defense approach to defend the homeland and maintain its security and stability. The BDF Commander-in-Chief said that BDF will always be interested in its servicemen, the true assets of the nation across all areas, and will support them and appreciate their efforts. History bears witness to the great capabilities that the BDF has provided to its men. It also works to honor its officers and personnel with medals and all forms of support at various levels in appreciation for their distinguished efforts and in honor of all their diligent work in the service of the BDF. He stressed his pride in the BDF men and in their efforts in all capacities.
The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, participated in the remote meeting organized by the International Bank on investing in human capital during the coronavirus pandemic. The minister delivered a speech in which he affirmed that Bahrain has invested in human capital throughout all of its development plans and programs and was keen on overcoming the challenges of the pandemic in order to ensure the health of the people and support the economy. The minister added that Bahrain has created a successful model for handling the pandemic based on programs and strategies that aim to revive the national economy. He noted that Bahrain prioritized supporting the national economy and the continuation of the private sector as one of the vital sectors that support the national economy. He also highlighted the development Bahrain achieved in the health and educational sectors in the past several years. The minister stated that the kingdom was keen on continuing the educational process during the pandemic by providing distance learning as part of the comprehensive educational system. He affirmed the role of the environmental sustainability in achieving economic recovery and the importance of integrating the sustainable environment concept in early educational stages. He noted that the leading digital infrastructure in Bahrain contributed to expanding digital transformation for financial and economic sectors during the pandemic. Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and his directives to protect fishermen, the capital governor, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdul Rahman Al Khalifa, provided support to and aid to affected fishermen, in line with His Majesty's keenness to provide high living standards to them. The governor conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King and affirmed His Majesty's keenness to provide aid and support to them and their families. He praised the support of the government, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and hailed the role of the Interior Minister General. Sheikh Rasha bin Abdullah Al Khalifa in following up on their needs and meeting them. He also praised the role of the Shura and Representatives Councils as well as the media and private institutions in supporting the affected fishermen and contributing in this regard to ensure their rights. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Bar Rashid Al Zayani, chaired the meeting of the Higher Coordination Committee for Human Rights following its restructure. He praised the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to matters concerned with the protection of human rights in Bahrain to ensure that the kingdom adheres to the principles and objectives of the United Nations on protecting human rights, consolidating the values of tolerance and coexistence, and preserving human dignity and freedom. He also praised the measures and initiatives taken by the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to increase the protection of human rights, develop the legislative system and follow up on the implementation of the principles and rights it has adopted. He added that the government has issued two important laws to promote human rights in the kingdom. The first is the Alternative Penal Code, which is an important step forward in the field of reform and rehabilitation. And the second is Correctional Justice Law for Children and their protection from abuse, among many others. The Kingdom of Bahrain ranked first in the Gulf and second in the Arab world in the field of economic participation opportunities in the annual report of the World Economic Forum Davis on measuring the gender gap in 156 countries in the world. The accomplishment is considered a new qualitative achievement for the Kingdom, which moved from third to second place at the Gulf level in terms of total value index. To speak more about this matter, we are joined on the phone by founder and chairwoman of Bahrain Entrepreneurship Organization, Ms. Faryalna. Hello and welcome, Ms. Faryal. Hello, good evening, good evening. Uh, yes, uh, I would, yeah, um, the annual report uh, that shows uh, the measure, uh, the annual report which measures the gender gap in, in 156 countries shows that Bahrain is uh, the top in the Gulf and, uh, and the second uh, globally and globally bahrain ranks as 137 with a score of 0.632 of course uh, this happens because of bahrain unique entrepreneurial ecosystem with the different initiatives that it provided uh, provide the state starting from the leadership the government the private sector corporates and the ngos are all working towards implementing the plan of empowering women in the field of economic and it succeeded because of the wise vision of His Majesty the King in supporting the Bahraini women and in, in all fields. And the strategy was established since the establishment of the Bahrain, uh, the Supreme Council for Women, which was established in uh, uh, the 22nd of August in 2001. 
the headed of uh, by Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim, uh, the president of the Supreme Council for Women. And the, and the implementation of the national plan for the advancement of Bahraini women's strategy. The Supreme Council for Women launched a bundle of training programs for a number of projects that aim at providing women with the needed skills and techniques to be able to establish and run small projects or enter the field of entrepreneurship in several professions suitable for Bahraini women and contribute in reducing women's unemployment rate and increase women's contribution in the national economy. The Supreme Council for the Women also continued partnership in, uh, to complete the economic work system through providing all services required for the economic empowerment programs, either through providing loans and concessional lending services or through providing integrated economic incubators that offer administrative consul uh, consultative training and technical services that women need to enter the field of entrepreneurship. Today uh, we are, uh, and of course the first, uh, our first lady, uh, Princess Sabika, who is the biggest supporter for the women in Bahrain, and we are where we are today because of the clear vision and the strategy designed and implemented in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to, to uh, say a few words about this amazing achievement for the Kingdom of Bahrain. We are very proud and we are very lucky to be in the Kingdom, we are part of uh, the Kingdom of our beloved country. Founder and Chairwoman of Bahrain Entrepreneurship Organization, Ms. Friyal Nas, thank you for joining us. The National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus held a press conference to provide an update on the Kingdom's COVID-19 response. The task force emphasized that the best way to mitigate the spread is by following all health and precautionary measures, getting vaccinated and to stop gatherings. The task force further emphasized that following all precautionary measures is everybody's responsibility to ensure the safety of families and communities. The Chief of Public Security, Lieutenant General Tariq Al Hassan, highlighted that the Ministry of Interior continues to safeguard the health of Bahraini citizens and residents by reviewing COVID 19 related measures across retail stores and restaurants in cooperation with the relevant authorities. He added that the best international standards have been implemented in correction and rehabilitation centers in coordination with the Ministry of Health to ensure the health and safety of inmates and staff. The Under Secretary at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Walid Al Mana, stressed the need to avoid gatherings of all kinds as the contact tracing mechanism revealed the gatherings are one of the main causes of transmission, noting that contact tracing data revealed last March that 91% of cases were due to gatherings in homes and other locations. Then the infectious disease consultant and microbiologist at the BDF Hospital, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Manaf al Gahtani, emphasized that the increase in cases has presented a new challenge to ensure the population follows the health and precautionary measures that have been reiterated since the onset of the global pandemic. He indicated that 99.2% of the current COVID-19 cases had not been vaccinated and those fully vaccinated did not exceed 0.86% of the total number of current cases. He noted that the percentage confirms that all vaccinations approved in Bahrain are safe in reducing the severity of the virus and effective in protecting individuals. The consultant of infectious and internal diseases at Salmaniya Medical Complex, Dr. Jamila Salman, emphasized that contact tracing operations showed that one existing case resulted in a large number of cases among family members who do not share the same household and urged everyone to stay at home and not go out except when necessary, stressing the need to stay away from social gatherings. Thanks. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 530,415 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 286,000 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 9,870 with 852 recoveries, 1,047 registered new cases and 4 deaths. 331 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 690 are contacts of active cases and 26 are travel related. The deceased were 2 male citizens, 1 female citizen and 1 expatriate. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus.